listening to a download from the outdoorstation.co.uk. Number three, zero, one. Well, welcome back, everybody, to uh, another exciting afternoon here in Friedrichshafen, uh, down here by Lake Constance over in uh, sunny, very, very warm Germany uh, for the International Trade Fair for outdoor gear and things that make us all terribly excited. Uh, and talking of terribly excited, Roman, our uh, German international correspondent, has been running around uh, this afternoon, left, right and centre, speaking to interesting people about products that he gets terribly excited about. Uh, and he tells me that uh, he's spoken to Mark Flanagan uh, from Golight, who's the uh, international general manager there, uh, about some new products, as well as diving into the Montaigne stand to speak to Chris regarding some very exciting new uh, um, jackets and materials which uh, they're releasing uh, very soon. Uh, we have also been equally as busy. We haven't been resting on our laurels. Uh, and we've caught up with uh, Emily Cooper, who regular listeners will probably recognise straight away as um, the New Zealander who runs uh, Silk Body. Um, we, uh, we've had uh, some involvement with Silk Body, fantastic products, but uh, we've uh, got a bit confused over the pricing structure. Uh, and she explained exactly what's happened to the price of silk and how's it, uh, how it's affected manufacture uh, and so on. So uh, we talked to her, um, and this is included in this podcast. So uh, here we go. Anyway, uh, we'll hand over to Roman, uh, who will no doubt introduce where he is and what he's doing. Uh, and, uh, well... Now let the rest of the stories unfold before your very ears. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to nip off and go and try and find a few more people to talk to before the show comes to an end. So let's talk a little bit about the new products for 2011. I know that you uh, did a little bit of work on the backpacks and also uh, introduced a new jacket. Let's talk about the new jacket first, which is a very lightweight marvel. Yes, hi, Roman. Uh, the new uh, lightweight jacket that we have this year is the Malpais jacket, um, three-layer light, light shell. Um, we've come to market with a jacket that's 190 grams in weight for men's, uh, with fully taped seams, waterproof zippers, uh, a fixed hood with uh, some closures, um, two fully waterproof uh, hand pockets and a fully waterproof front zip um, stand, and adjustable cuffs, and retailing at uh, about £180. The uh, hydrostatic head uh, factor is around about 17,000 mm, and the uh, moisture vapor transfer rate is 15,000. So we're very pleased to have the lightest uh, fully waterproof three-layer jacket on the uh, at, at, at the show. So, so how do those uh, uh, factors around uh, breathability and waterproofness compare to established uh, brands like uh, Gore-Tex and Event, for example? We are uh, comparable. Um, 17,000, 15,000 is, uh, is at the higher end of, of, of most brands. Um, we don't concentrate too much on numbers, more about performance, and we're always very honest with our uh, ratings. So we're very confident of 17,000, 15,000, and um, we feel for most uh, outdoor pursuits, those two numbers uh, fit the bill. Um, breathability is quite high at 15,000 because of how light the, the fabric is, but uh, we have a very, very high rating of 17,000 on waterproof. So we're very, very pleased on how the jacket would turn, turned out in terms of uh, ratings on, on those two uh, measurements. So the general availability of the jacket, when would that be? Uh, we're looking at uh, early January for availability for all retailers. Um, so, uh, you know, picking up some quarter one sales for inclement weather in northern Europe, but uh, a very good travel piece as well as it packs down uh, to a lightweight, uh, to, a, to a small area. And uh, in which colours will that jacket be available? We have five colours currently scheduled. Um, we have a foliage green, uh, a granite with a red zip and a black, uh, also a red and a blue. All right, good. That was very impressive. So, and the next thing is uh, probably... Uh, a little bit of surprise in terms of uh, of the size because it, it looks a little bit like uh, the answer from Golight to the uh, Exo series from Osprey, which uh, has been released about two years ago at the show and uh, I guess was a tremendous success for Osprey. And now uh, Golight uh, comes up with a new uh, a high volume capacity pack called the Terono in 2011. Tell us a little bit more about that one. Well, Roman. Um We've always done a 90-litre backpack, which has been called the Odyssey. Um, so there's no increase in capacity there. But what we 
what we had been requested numerous times by retailers was uh, some adjustability to the back system. And so what we've developed is a backpack range called the Torono. And the Torono is a fully custom all back, back system that, also, that um, adjusts four inches in the torso and adjusts four inches in the hips. So it, it, it basically adjusts both ways. Um, it features Dyneema um, fabric in terms of the, the in, in the main in the main compartment, so it fits very well into our current uh, range of products from a merchandising perspective. But from a performance perspective, um, it, it really it really does fit the fit all requirements. We, we, we're doing it in a 90 liter version for men's and a 70 liter, and an 85 liter and 65 liter uh, for women's. Um, all packs feature the. Uh, patented compactor system from Golight, so they all compact down to uh, a day size pack if you need that. But from the testing that we've been done for the past six months with all our test people around the world, uh, we're coming to market with what we feel is is, uh, is the most customable pack on the market. Now, the 90 litre is coming in at just a little bit over two, gra- two, two kilograms on, in men's, and the 85 litre is uh, 1.76 in in women's so although they're fully featured uh, with all the sort of adjustments and all the details you would expect from a a very very adjustable backpack they're also obviously in keeping with our philosophy of um, not over engineering things and keeping things to to what you need and nothing you don't all right so when will those uh, packs again be available for the end customer and price point well we are hoping to do a, a late end of year launch um, so a, a late November early early December 2010 and uh, the price points are 200 and 180 All right and uh, colors for that pack color combinations we're doing a, a, a green version in both men's and women's and uh, like a black version in both men's and women's and the we're doing a sun color which is like our corporate color uh, the difference being between the two that the women's has a, a like a grayer color in the contrast and the men's has black. So essentially three in both. Okay. I think those products are, let's say, one, uh, the two major ones for 2011. Uh, as far as I understood, uh, tents, uh, sleeping bags, etc., more or less stay the same as they currently are. Yes, a lot of retailers have expressed a, a preference to, for us to have a little bit of consistency in the range. So our shelters stay, remain the same from, from 2010 to 2011. Um, our backpacks uh, have a, a new style in, in Toronto. Um, our sleeping bags stay the same, um, and, and, and so do our bottle packs. And a lot of our development in terms of product has come with apparel. So we have new, feature, new, new apparel styles. Uh, such as the, uh, the the Malpace, which I spoke about earlier, but also the Post Canyon soft shell, which is a very lightweight soft shell. And we continue to grow our travel range. Um, and essentially, and especially within the travel luggage area, we've included four new styles on the back of a very good launch this year for our travel um, products in terms of luggage. We do a 2.5 kilogram carry-on style uh, in, 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 the, in the luggage, in the travel luggage, which has been ex- exceptionally well received due to the uh, weight restrictions on carry-on for uh, most airlines now to 10 kilograms. So we've got a 2.5 carry-on style with, with wheels, and we even do a one kilogram carry-on style uh, uh, that is also within the, weight, within the size restrictions. So the range is growing, uh, but in the, in the areas that people want consistency, such as three-person tents, Uh, one season sleeping bags and one person shelters we've we've got some consistency there that we can keep on growing the brand with okay thank you very much and i wish you all success for 2011 and thank you for your time you're listening to the outdoorstation.co.uk It's two years since I've seen you. Yes. Um, it's lovely to see you here again. You too. Um, we'd heard the, the, the price of silk and things had changed in the, in the market, but I understand that I've got completely the wrong end of the stick on that. Yes, well, uh, the price of silk uh, yes, has increased like everything else, um, but we have tried to keep the end consumer price reasonable. So I don't expect that uh, end consumers should find that the uh, price has increased exorbitantly. Um, should be manageable. 
Excellent. Um, it's two years since we've seen you. Um, last time we spoke, we were talking about silk, silk underwear, and it was yes. it was coming through. Yes. Uh, I understand it's now a production model. It is absolutely. It's available. Um, it's very nice. It's hundred uh, percent silk boxes. Uh, we have a men's style which has been very popular uh, and next season we will be introducing a, me- a woman's uh, brief as well uh, Can we have a look at the brief here? Yeah. This is a really nice style in 100% silk which I think is very nice um, for next to skin for underwear um, It's obviously very breathable um, easy to wash out and dry overnight perfect for travel Excellent. And presumably the, the men's boxes come in a range of sizes, so the smaller boxer uh, will be able to be used by women that want to use shiwis? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we have had that feedback. Uh, they come from uh, going ext- uh, sorry, small to uh, double extra large in black and khaki. OK, yeah. lovely. Uh, what are the new pieces then? It's, it's, it's two years since I've seen you, so tell me about some of these new pieces I can see here on the side. Well, one I'd like to show you is the uh, cellular base layer. And this is a really nice uh, technical base layer fabric that we're using. It's heavier weight than our silk spun base layer. Uh, rather than 125 gram, it's 180 gram. And it's 80% silk and 20% merino. So what are the technical benefits of that mix? Well, it's got its really interesting texture, uh, quite a three-dimensional texture, which means that it traps more warm air next to the skin, so it's more insulating. Um, and it has a greater surface area, which means that it dries faster. So we do recommend this fabric um, if you are going to be sweating quite a lot. Uh, it will dry faster. So if uh, for somebody who is out uh, for a few days at a time and they want to wash in a stream or whatever, this will actually dry a lot faster than the, the standard 100%, 100% silk? Yes, absolutely. But also when you're wearing it, um, <clears throat> when you're uh, sweating a lot, it will um, be more comfortable because it's, it is very breathable. And it won't get that um, the damp the damp feeling next to the skin. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But the the, the bacterial properties of of silk uh, and uh, the, all the materials you use in your manufacturing have obviously proven themselves over well since we've met about four years ago. Yeah. Uh, and we ourselves have uh, various stories of people that have been using silk based layers and for in very very yeah. <laughs> unpleasant conditions and and coming out sw- yeah. smelling sweet as Two a nut. Two weeks you told me yeah. somebody had worn the same top with um, not a whiff at the end. Yeah, in Mexico doing some hard stuff. So yeah. that, that's 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 a great uh, uh, recommendation for the, the, the properties of the, yeah. of the material. Yeah. Uh, what about this uh, waistcoat here you were telling me about? Uh, this one here is our new uh, generation silk fleece. Um, the last time I saw you, we showed you the uh, 100% silk fleece um, that we won an outdoor award for. Uh, this one here that I'm showing you now is called Bonded Silk Fleece, and it's... Uh, We're very excited about it. It's um, silk fleece on the inside, 100% silk, and we've bonded it with our silk spun fabric on the outside. It means that the exterior of the garment is uh, more durable, and because it is bonded, uh, it's really quite wind resistant. And it has a really nice look, um, not quite as as shiny as the silk fleece, which doesn't suit everybody. Um, It's really nice features as well, extra pockets, um, zipper garage comes in, a, in the vest style and also in a jacket. Okay. Oh, in a full jacket as well? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Excellent. yeah. So I presume really this is sort of more camp wear, uh, people that uh, want a nice stylish piece as opposed to perhaps the super lightweight market. Yes, exactly. Uh, we do call it a soft shell uh, garment, but that term is obviously fluid and means different things to yes. different people. Absolutely. So it, it isn't waterproof, but it is wind resistant and it's, it's very warm. Okay, the other thing I'd like to ask you about is uh, long johns. Uh, a few years ago when we saw the first uh, range of long johns that came out, they were what I'd call traditional old men's long johns in the way that they were very, very high-waisted and, and not very flattering in the leg. Yes. Um, have you changed the design of those? Yes, we have. We've updated the styling and modernised it. So the, the baseline is lower. Um, people now are, are used to wearing um, garments uh, a little bit lower on the hips. Uh, so we've updated that and um, a better cut through the leg as well, yeah. There's a fabulous range of colours I can see surrounding me. Uh, Tell me more about uh, what's coming through for 2011. For the summer 2011 range, we have uh, Grey Marl, which is a really fantastic (coughs) neutral um, for guys and for women. Uh, Coral, which is a gorgeous, bright uh, colour. Lime, uh, a green, obviously. 
uh, it's very fresh, nice for summer, and an iris colour, <clears throat> which is a really lovely blue. And what about guys? What do guys get? <laughs> well, they get the grey male, they also get the coconut, uh, which is actually a colour that we um, have continued uh, through from last season, it was very popular. And there's a colour called sandstone as well, which is um, very wearable. As well as the, as the standard back. Of course, yeah, everything comes in black. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's just wind back a section. Um, I say it was four years ago when I first met you, and it was the first yeah. time, I think, well, yeah, yeah. coming over to yeah. the, the, the show here at Friedrichshafen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just generally, uh, hmm. I'm sure people would be interested to know how the, how the company has developed and how the sort of feedback you've had from the worldwide market, apart from the local market in, in New Zealand, obviously. Oh, sure, yeah. Well, uh, it's, it's, it's always interesting... Um, Coming from New Zealand, um, the European market is very different um, to New Zealand, and, and we, we have had to make um, some changes in terms of our styling and um, uh, some of the some of the expectations of, of um, consumers are, are definitely different. How so? Uh, I would love to have a bit more information. Well, we just were looking at, at the, at the uh, men's boxes um, earlier, and uh, we were discussing the um, functionality of, of the fly. Um, which for us, you know, we, we thought that was necessary. You know, you don't have to use it. <laughs> but we also get the feedback um, that uh, it's, it's, it's a feature that, you know, is not necessary for some European end consumers. So that sort of thing is um, uh, something that we have to deal with. But it's, it's really exciting. Um, the, the, the range is going really well um, in Europe. Uh, Any particular country that's sort of shown a stronger sort of feedback or sort of, of uh, uh, welcome the range more? Yeah, I mean, Germany uh, goes particularly well. Um, uh, also, uh, Belgium and, and the Netherlands um, and Sweden. Uh, I think consumers <coughs> are really interested in natural um, products, natural fibres next to the skin. They understand the benefits. Uh, and they're also... Uh, they want a quality product. Um, so... Uh, so, that, I mean, the Scandinavian countries you've mentioned, are they using the product as uh, obviously insulating base layers because of the temperature, because it's colder, or is it more as a, a fashion outdoor brand? Uh, I mean, it's interesting because different brands, as they yeah. go into different countries, yeah. form a different sector of the marketplace. Yeah. Sometimes it's very technical and sometimes yeah. it's fashion, and yet it's the same product. Yeah. Well, I think it's interesting. And I think in, in winter time, uh, people are definitely wearing it more as a as an extra skin base layer. So uh, um, the technicalities, uh, the technical uh, properties, are what attracts people for winter time. And then for summer, they're wearing it um, as an only layer next to the skin. But obviously, the colours and the, and the fashion aspect is really important. But so it's it's really a combination. And I think that's the fantastic thing about Silk Body is that it does work. Um, as a technical garment, but it also looks fantastic. Yeah, yeah, well. Yeah. Well, congratulations once again, Emily. It's been lovely to see you, and I uh, hope it's not two years before I see you again. Yeah, uh, I do right. apologise about that. the delay, but uh, we'll look forward to, to keep uh, promoting the Silk Body name in the UK because I think it's a fantastic brand, and obviously uh, the technical performance of it is, uh, is second to none. So thanks again. Great, thanks, Bob. Thanks, Rose. <laughs> Any time, any place. Anywhere. This is the Outdoor Station. A million listeners worldwide can't be wrong. It's all about the great outdoors. So I'm standing here with Chris from Montaigne, uh, and we are talking about a very exciting new item, item they will release in 2000. And 11, uh, which is called uh, their Spectra Smog, an ultralight event smog. Uh, uh, but Chris can, can talk us through all of the features of that new upcoming jacket which, and which makes it a little bit special. Okay, so the Spectra Smog uh, was basically uh, it was developed for uh, ultra racing, ultralight mountain marathons with a full level of performance. So we use a three layer event fabric throughout. Um, and using minimal construction techniques wherever possible, we've got the weight down to 210 grams for a size medium. It's a pullover version, and uh, basically there is no draw cording, no adjustment on the product at all. So it has 
elasticated hem, elasticated cuffs, pre-elasticated section in the small of the back to help reduce flappiness when running. A lot of runners and cyclists don't like that on a jacket. The hood is fully pre-tensioned as well with a crown and also around the brim and uh, it has no wired peak in it which helps reduce weight because we find that a lot of competitors in these events they uh, tend to use uh, a baseball cap of some sort. uh, One of the main sort of features of the system is the fact that uh, we have taken the zip out of the jacket. There's two reasons for not using a a water-resistant zip on this, which is uh, we've managed to reduce the weight by not using it, and also there is increased flexibility around the neck area, which a water-resistant zip does add a little bit of stiffness to the product. We call it the Tornado Roll Closure System, and for a lot of people, the simplest way of understanding this is it's just like a dry bag uh, in the fact that you, you, you stick the two pieces together and then you roll it two times before closing over on a hook loop system. So we have an elasticated hoop that goes over a plastic cleat and that locks into place. And the whole idea of this is to give it a versatile, adjustable closure system without using a zip. So that is the main sort of, sort of development that we've tried to uh, create with this product to give a bit of interest and to give an alternative closure system that truly works that gives us a very weatherproof seal in a minimum weight package so going uh, to that tornado system a little bit in detail so there's a, actually a velcro uh, closure where you initially yeah. close it so if, if you if you want let's say to to regulate your heat a little bit during during your race and partially open it can that be done Yeah, very simple, really. With the main Velcro system, it allows, when you have the jacket fully undone, as it were, on the smock section where the zip closure would be, it gives you an expanded area around the neck and you can get good ventilation. You can easily pull the Velcro open to fully ventilate the jacket, no problems. With a little bit of practice, it does take a little bit of learning, but you can actually close this jacket one-handed while wearing it. And uh, it's, it's very simple to do. A lot of people we've found will only keep the first two cleat systems closed uh, when they have the hood down and just ventilate from the top section. And if the weather does get quite hideous, then you can actually pull the hood up, finish closing, and then you can again close one-handed up against the side of the face. So it is a one-handed operation with a little bit of practice. But, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good ventilation system and uh, you can quite happily open the jacket up a fair amount and still stay semi-weatherproof without having the roll system fully closed. So if you wear, let's say, one of those uh, fast-drying shirts with uh, not natural fibres, sometimes, you know, Velcro tends to to, uh, destroy, not not destroy, but at least uh, damage that uh, that fabric a little bit. Uh, Have you looked uh, or thought about this? Um, If you leave the jacket open, it is very possible that the one section of Velcro could come in and catch, but that is on the outer side piece. So if I open up the jacket now, you will see that the the harder hook section of the Velcro is on the outside and that the soft Velcro is on the bit that's on the inside. So this should not cause a situation. In the majority of circumstances, we would feel that, that most people would get adequate ventilation from the roll closure system, even with it actually Velcro closed. And you said that the brim obviously is made for for adventure racing type of things. So if you if you want, let's say, more protection from the elements in terms of also a, a better vis- visibility, you said you you would probably recommend to use a, a baseball style cap underneath it. Yeah, yeah, definitely use uh, a baseball cap with a plastic peak uh, to give you full weather protection. And uh, it's, a, it's an integrated system that we offer. We do two versions of a baseball cap. We do a, a high wick, sun protection factor baseball cap, and we also manufacture a full event baseball cap uh, to give two people two options uh, on that system. The idea with it also is that uh, if you take the baseball cap off, it can be stashed down inside the hood, and then we actually have a little Velcro tab system so you can retain your baseball cap inside the hood at the back of your neck and then if you require the full hood system you can just quite easily reach behind you the baseball cap is stored in the hood system it stays in place due to the elastication of the hood okay so i also saw that you know very clean cut uh, seams um no pockets of, of any size uh, and uh, obviously you know from from a from a design perspective very minimalistic design right 
Uh, yeah, very much so. Uh, the end user of this piece is going to be an adventure racer, ultra marathon, long distancer. And something like a pocket on a jacket is, is we deem not necessary in this circumstance. They have a rucksack and uh, pieces will be attached to that. Many people will have a compass attached to the rucksack shoulder strap. They've got a map which they can stash and uh, they're using a hydration system or they're using sports bottles which are again attached to the rucksack. So it's not necessary to add weight to a product by putting pockets and pocket zips on that as well. Seam detailing wise, we've used minimum seam technology wherever we can. The entire sleeve is made out of one piece of fabric and we use a, a corkscrew twist system which gives us uh, an increased articulation and movement through the sleeve area and uh, keeps the seams down to a minimum uh, all the way through the product so yeah it's a great piece of kit when when actually will that uh, spectra smog be available for end users uh, color options and last but not least price point um, yeah the uh, spectra smog will be uh, launched uh, for march 2011 and should be in the shops from then onwards we are making it just in the one color which is uh, our classic montane moroccan blue and it has orange trim uh, for people that know the montane brand that is uh, one of our classic colors that we manufacture a lot of our lightweight products in and uh, price point in the uk we're looking at uh, 180 pounds so second item which I would like to mention here uh, while I'm at the Montane booth is the new Slipstream GL uh, Windbreaker full zip jacket and uh, well uh, it has some uh, very nice new feature which uh, actually reduces the weight pretty significantly but uh, please talk us through that. Yeah, okay. Um, a few people that uh, will know Montaigne well, that we do manufacture some of the lightest equipment in the world. And uh, our old slipstream jacket that we've had on the market for a bit uh, came in at 85 grams uh, using the Pertex Quantum fabric. And uh, Pertex have uh, worked hard to uh, reduce the weight, reduce the uh, size of the fibers, and therefore we can uh, make a new lightweight jacket out of the new Pertex uh, that is being released on the market. So this is uh, the, new, uh, the new Slipstream GL. Uh, GL stands for Gossamer Light. That is the part that comes from the Quantum GL fabric. And um, basically we're managing to, to make a full zip uh, windproof water resistant product coming in at uh, 65 grams total weight. Uh, the main feature of the piece is the fabric weight, but uh, at Montaigne we like to also talk about the quality of our construction as well. And you'll find that people that know dressmaking, we have a system where all of our seams are done on a French seam. And uh, the main reason for using a French seam is there's uh, no major visible overlock stitching at all. Uh, the product looks quality finished when you turn it inside out and uh, also gives a softer seam finish so you have no rough stitching when you're just using a running vest or something underneath the product as well. So in, in terms of uh, durabil durability, that uh, new material compared to, to the previous version, are we talking about, let's say, the same levels of durability or less or more? Uh, the specifications of the new Quantum GL fabric is realistically around about the same amount of abrasion uh, in terms of their standard abrasion test. And the windproofing and the breathability rate is exactly the same as well. Okay. So, uh, from a let's say from a cut perspective, uh, it's a hoodless uh, windbreaker, as I probably said. Uh, this is identical to the existing uh, slipstream jacket, right? Yeah, exactly identical. The, the the main thing that gives us this amazing weight saving is is Pertex development, as it were. So, yeah, uh, we are designing it as a nice, close-fitting, summer weight, windproof jacket. You got elasticated hem, elasticated cuff lightweight zip which we do back off so you don't get wind running through the zip and again we don't use a hood on this option uh, it does add weight when you add hoods okay. all right so again uh, one color classic montane blue yeah, classic available blue. With, uh, with an orange with an orange zip uh, excuse me an orange zip and uh, availability and price point Yeah, availability again. We're launching this one for March 2011, and uh, we're coming in at the uh, the amazing price here of uh, 80 pounds for 65 grams. So that's you know there or thereabouts. We're actually talking around 40 pounds an ounce. Wow! All right, great. Thanks. So thanks a lot for presenting us those uh, two very impressive products, and I wish uh, you and Montaigne all the best for 2011. Thank you very much indeed. See you again.
Well, there you have it. Uh, the story has unfolded this afternoon, and uh, thanks very much indeed to Roman for his efforts uh, in speaking to people because, because he's heading off tonight to uh, go on a long walk for a couple of weeks, uh, and he's very much looking forward to that. I think he said he was going to the Pyrenees. I must check his blog out and find out where he went. Um, and also thanks to our guests as well, to, uh, to Mark, to Emily, and to Chris for joining in and sharing the information about products we're obviously going to be seeing uh, come 2000 and. 11. Uh, well, I think we're going to squeeze a few more interviews in before this uh, series comes to an end, so there'll probably be another uh, another podcast release from Friedrichshafen. Uh, but in the meantime, folks, I hope you've enjoyed uh, everything that we found out for you and uh, captured some of the atmosphere and some of the things that are going on generally in the outdoors world. Uh, and we'll be back to uh, catch up with you next time. So until then, take care and bye for now. Thank you for listening to this podcast. To hear more from our extensive free library, please visit the website at theoutdoorstation.co.uk. You can now follow The Outdoor Station on Facebook, where we chat about each programme we produce, answer questions and discuss future productions. Why not join us there? This podcast is produced and hosted by theoutdoorstation.co.uk. 